sweet, beautiful Scorpio full moon from my heart to your heart. Welcome. Here we are, Scorpio full moon. I am recording this in uh, Southern Hemisphere in Australia, and this time is for the Eastern Seaboard, so the Australian Eastern Standard Time for the full moon, which is on the 24th of August 2024 at 9.48 a.m. Um, this is a whole sign house chart, as you can see. And this Scorpio full moon is happening at four degrees and 17 minutes of Scorpio. As you can see, Scorpio is the glyph of the M, which is going deep into the depths of fixed water, then shooting out at the arrow at the end. So it is a sign of deep transformation. It is ruled by the tarot card of the death card. It's it's what we have learnt and all the information we've gathered since the start of the cycle. And now it's like, well, now we have this wisdom. How do we shift it and change it into something new for the collective? Scorpio is the last of the social signs, social signs um, where, you know, you and I work together. How do we move through this world? And then from there we come together and we create something new. And, you know, it's really interesting that Scorpio rules the sexual organs. It, it's it's like creating babies and, you know, passion and desire and sexuality. And from that we make something new. We create a baby together, for example, if we're going to use it in that way. And then we go out and we become these you know, citizens that have this responsibility for the future generations, you know, that that's when it comes into the collective signs, the Sagittarius and Capricorn and Aquarius and Pisces. So this is the place that it's not new, but it's something that we have gathered the information throughout the cycle and now it's time to shift it and change it and create something better from what we know and it's really, really interesting that this Scorp Scorpio full moon, and like every Scorpio full moon here in the Southern Hemisphere, it coincides with the Earth cycle of Halloween or Samhain. <laughs> and it's not Halloween that is Northern Hemisphere, which is in October the 31st. But here in the Southern Hemisphere, Samhain hits here and. The 5th of May, which is the actual point between autumn equinox and winter solstice, or the traditional date would be the 30th of April. So this is a thinning of the veils here in the Southern Hemisphere that matches this scorpionic energy of this transformation of gathering the information from the harvest and what are we collecting from that to create something new that moves into the last end of the harvest, the last point, which is between Samhain and winter solstice, which feels like a void actually. So it's like what are you taking from this Scorpio full moon into the void, into the exposure of the full cosmos that is winter solstice, this full illumination of what was birthed here on this earth in the Southern Hemisphere back at winter solstice last year. And, you know, putting all the seeds and putting all our prayers and wishes and spells and our desires of what we want to manifest throughout spring and, you know, early summer, and then watching the harvest bring it up, bring it up. And this is like the final harvest. It's the point of the pumpkins. That's why it's not Halloween in spring because there are no pumpkins. But pumpkins represent the last summer fruit, the last seed you know, the, the last fruit of the seeds that we planted in spring. That's why pumpkins are used at Halloween. So here we are at Selwyn, Scorpio full moon, where the veils are the thinnest between us and the ancestors. And what a good way to celebrate this Scorpio full moon is by making an altar to your ancestors. Put all your beloved dead on a wall somewhere and light some candles and put some beautiful flowers to really honour them, you know, honour their stories, speak their stories, share with the children who their ancestor is, where they've come from. And also keep in mind that 
one day we're going to be ancestors. And wouldn't it be wonderful if our children shared the stories of who we were so their children understand where they come from? It's all about teaching the children, actually. So this Scorpio full moon opposite the sun here, which is always the case, a full moon is always opposite the sun, this early degrees of Scorpio. So it, it's, it feels like whatever's happened between um, the full moon, I mean, the new moon, which was the eclipse, the Aries new moon eclipse, the solar eclipse, back two weeks ago. Could you believe it's only been two weeks? And also actually the last eclipse, <laughs> that cycle that started back four weeks ago uh, at autumn equinox at the Libra and full moon, you know, we're, this is the first lunation after the eclipse season. So things have shifted and changed and we've seen things come up that no longer service and things taken away and something else has come up. And it's, it's been a wild couple of weeks and not couple of weeks, four weeks actually. And, you know, eclipse seasons are usually pretty intense, but this one's been particularly intense, I think, because why I say this is because if you have a look up here in Pisces, we've had Mars that crossed uh, Saturn here so it's like this masculine energy really asking to be you know to step up and take some responsibility and to be disciplined in these actions and responsibility in Pisces which is unbounded energy so it feels like Mars coming in and Saturn just going no you can't behave like that you can't do that in this unbounded energy you've got to be responsible of your energy cycles and, and who you are out here in the collective into this great unbounded energy of all and nothingness because this is the point, this Pisces point where Mars and Saturn have been moving through together in the last four weeks. It's, it's, it's a place of deep, um, the word I'm thinking of, it's, it's, it's deep creation space. And if you're flying in there as Mars does sort of willy-nilly and wants to do this and do that and you know, just sort of move without really thinking or moving, it, it, it can't really do that there because it feels like it will just be a car crash or something because, you know, the there hasn't been clear intention or responsibility taken out for the energy that we are casting that's going to affect us all. So Mars has had a big journey through um, Pisces so far. It will hit um, it will hit Neptune here at, at some point in the next um, couple of weeks, which is powerful, which is now that now Mars has had this conversation with Saturn. What's the dreaming now? What are you taking in in these last degrees of the zodiac into uh in Mars into its home sign and the first week of May. Also, we've had in the last couple of weeks is this little cluster over here. We've actually had the sun move here. Uh, this is where the new moon eclipse, Aries eclipse was two weeks ago, right next to this key here, which is Chiron, which is the wounded healer. Mercury, which is station, it's in being retrograde, which will station direct on the 25th, so the day after. At North Node, you know, going to the future, but first of all, we need to attend some soreness from our past and really look at whether these stories that are coming up are true or not uh, in order for us to step through this portal of the North Node in Aries, you know, into leadership Aries to move with the spark of the ideas to get things cracking. And also what we had on Sunday is this over here. This is the this is Uranus, which is a, the planet of revolutionary change and technology, and Jupiter, the planet of expansion and openings and portals of just how far can you go with this? So this feels like that revolutionary change of expansion. You know, big things have happened around Uranus and Jupiter conjunctions in the past. Um, you know, landing on the moon, 
women's suffragettes was created under a Jupiter and Uranus conjunction. Uh, there's so much that happens around this time. Computers, I had Steve Jobs, and I can't remember the other man's name, how terrible, you know, created the first computer under a back in the um, 83 with the Jupiter and Uranus conjunction. So I'm just thinking of that Paul Kelly song from small things, big things grow. And these little sparks of ideas and Callings, you know, what are you being called to change and to step into? You know, even though if they start small now, this would be something, this would be a time when we get to in four years' time or five years' time and we'll look back and we will go, that's when that thing started. Oh my goodness. And look at it now. So it's a very powerful time. But with this Scorpio full moon, it's calling us that we probably need to change some things before we step into that. You know, with this Chiron and Venus over here, you know, Chiron is says the wounded healer. It's and with Mercury, it, it's all, you know, really looking at in the North Node, Mercury and the North Node, um, North Node is a portal to the future. It's like we've been, it's like we've been called awake by our future selves to plant the seed now but first of all we need to get over ourselves or to to attend stuff that has happened in the past with our ancestors given that it's so in here in the southern hemisphere but something is calling us to transform before we go out into that expansive place you know and because you know, you know Jupiter rules Sagittarius, which is the next full moon that comes after this one. So this deep transformation that has been highlighted under a full moon. And also we've got this square. This is a square between Pluto, who's the ruler, one of the rulers of this full moon. Squares are 90 degree angles. So we can take it here, uh, Jupiter, uh, Pluto at two degrees of Aquarius, which is a air sign, is making a, and it's a fixed sign. So all, you know, all modalities square each other. So this is a fixed air versus fixed water. And what does that look like with a 90 degree angle? You know, if two, if if you've got the moon going this way and you've got Pluto going that way, at some point they're going to crash, and it feels like this. There's a tension between Pluto, the ruler of the full moon, the lord of the underworld, calling us to go deep, to really look at our shadow side, to look what needs to move and shift and change in order for us to then come out from the depth and go out you know, and plant these amazing ideas out into the space for, you know, for the collective. It's, don't underestimate, you know, your capacity to change the world. I'm just saying. But before we do that, there's some things we need to attend to. And, and, and again, feeling this ancestral thread of, you know, what ancestral stories that are coming up that no longer serve this new paradigm. You know, and just you now I'm thinking of, you know, things that have been hidden or, you know, worthiness wounds because we haven't been able to step in. You know, there's a whole, I'm sorry, that's my own personal thing coming through. Oh, 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 there it is. You know, things hidden come out into light. Hello, everyone. Yes, I have a worthiness wound. It's so funny. Um, Chiron and Taurus here. But there's, there's things coming up and I'm just thinking of like the witch burnings or not being safe to be seen in our magic. And that's a really big thing when we are hearing the call to step into something and to change something for the betterment that, that Jupiter and Uranus expansion and change but what is holding you back, being full illuminated? And that's what this Scorpio full moon brings. Yes, it feels big. It's because it is and because we are in big times and 
you know, we're all moving through this. No one is not experiencing anything, I can guarantee it. But it's just a time to step up and take responsibility and to change what we are doing here because, you know, if we drop back down into the the matrix, it doesn't look good, you know. War and friction and clashes, it, it, it feels really dense. And so what is the medicine? What do we need to do? to to step in to our medicine gifts what are we really here to do and this is what i say to the anana women at the moment as we are sending who are you and why are you really here really who are you from a cosmic perspective not a not a, a human perspective but who are you really and why are you really here what's called you back to this lifetime to this body as I said, don't underestimate your ability to change the world. And what has been highlighted this full moon is what stands in our way, what needs to be transformed, what needs to be left, you know, in the underworld before we go in and create new seeds that is being calling to us. The future is calling, Aquarius. <laughs> Pluto and Aquarius, the future is calling. But first of all, we need to attend to the, the shadows in the underworld that's holding us back from stepping into this new paradigm that is here. Whoa. Okay. Well, that is the Scorpio full moon. May it be gentle for you and, you know, and, and also holding yourself as a witness perspective and, just really questioning if something is coming up, is this true now? How does this serve now? And, you know, maybe there's a call to attend to your inner child or to do that ancestral work. You know, this is the time to do this. The energies are pushing us along and, you know, it's harder if you resist it. You know, it's more painful if we resist the thing that needs to be transformed because the universe is just going to get louder and louder and louder until we do something about it. So work with the energies. That's why astrology is so good because it gives us the, the map so we can navigate the terrain and Move with it. It's the most powerful thing you can do. Move with the energies that are here because it's all helping you, right? It's all helping us to, to step into something better. Yeah. With my love to your heart, with my heart to your heart, blessings on this Scorpio full moon. May you have the courage to deeply transform and to, to allow what needs to be changed to fully be illuminated and to move with it with such ease and grace. Much love. Take care. See you on the other side.